Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing these micro pearls from Brutus Monroe. And these are new. They are really unique and they're basically a very tiny bead. But they have no holes. So you can use them to add accents to cards or you can use them like I'm using them today to make little tiny shakers, which is really fun. So I'm giving you a close-up look of these blue ones. The collection I have is the bold colors. So I have a green, a blue, a clear, and a pink. And I'm going to be using the clear and the pink for my card today. So how I made my little shaker elements to my cards is I used these Winnie and Walter dies. Now these dies are perfect because it cuts out these shapes that have all these little areas that you can fill with beads. So if you have any kind of dies that is similar to this, um, you can definitely do this technique with what you already have. So I went ahead and I cut out these hearts. I cut the shadow background and I also cut out all of these little heart um, overlay pieces that I'm going to be stacking up together to kind of build walls to hold those beads in. Very simple once you um, get all the pieces cut out. And then once you stack up those pieces and you glue them together, you can get a little piece of acetate and put it on to kind of hold those beads in and kind of make your window. So that's what I did with that card that I have here on my desk. That heart is full of these micro beads. I put some blue, some green, and some clear ones, and it kind of follows that ombre ink blending background. Um, and I thought that was really fun. Today I'm making a little bit of a different style of shaker, but I just wanted to show you how I built this one and how you can build your own. So here's my little shaker on this card, which is really colorful and fun. Today's card is going to be a little bit more floral, a little bit more natural colors. And I'm using this Winnie and Walter die as well. I cut out the leaves, I cut out the um, flower, and I cut out the shadow part as well as the outline part. So I already did the leaves. This was really tiny and tedious to do, <laughs> but it was worth it. I think it looked good in the end. But I stacked up all those tiny little die cuts, put some of those micro beads in there, and I think it's really cool. Um, it kind of just shows you how tiny these beads are, that you can build these really tiny, tiny shaker bits for your cards. So here's all the pieces that I'm using to make this rose into a shaker piece. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is grab my Brutus Monroe craft glue, and I'm using my fine tip ap applicator because I want to make sure to get just a tiny bit of glue on this tiny die cut and so that all this glue doesn't go squishing everywhere. Um, so I'm just kind of carefully applying glue around this die cut. I'm trying to get it on most of this so it's going to stay adhered down to the base piece of my flower. Um, but I, I did my best. Some of it kind of squished out the side but once it's dry your little beads aren't going to stick to it at all. So just do your best. Uh, these fine tip applicators are fantastic for your glue bottles to do these tiny die cuts and tiny sentiments and stuff so I really love mine. So I'm just going to go ahead and stack up all of these die cuts just the same way. So I got one down, I'm working on the second one and I'm just stacking them on top of each other and this is building the walls to hold in those micro pearls. So this craft glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room um, you can move it around, get it lined up before it completely dries. So I did about three layers of this die, and I found that three layers seems to be a good height for these micro pearls. You can do two, but you kind of have to squish it down, and the pearls don't shake as freely. So I feel like three is a good height. So here are the big, the, not the big, here are the pink <laughs> micro pearls that I'm going to be putting into my shaker flower. I'm just going to gently tap some of them in there. Now you can use a little spoon or a little scoop or something if you want to. I didn't have one on hand so I just went ahead and I gently sprinkled some of these beads into my rose. And I did get some of these beads kind of bouncing around on my craft table but I found I could just kind of wipe them into my hand and put them back in my jar so it wasn't too much of a big deal. You could also do this in like a little pan or on top of a piece of paper and that would help you to pick up those beads as well and put them back into the container if you want to save every last one. 
I also made sure not to fill it too full. If you fill it too full, they're not gonna shake as freely. They're just gonna kind of sit in there and they'll look pretty, but if you really wanna get a good shaker, make sure you don't overfill it. Now I'm putting some of that craft glue on my walls. Again, I'm trying to be careful here, now that the beads are already in my shaker, not to get the beads sticking to my glue and um, also not to get, <laughs> not to shake my shaker too much and let the beads all fly out. So um, this part is a little bit tedious. It takes a little bit of gentle work, um, but I think it's worth it in the end. Now I'm just adding that piece of acetate over the top. I'm gonna hold it down and make sure it, it adheres tightly so that it will keep all of those micro pearls in the shaker. And if you don't want to hold it, you can just put a stamp block on top of it, like I did, and that's just going to hold it in place while it dries. So I'm just kind of moving it off to the side so it can dry while I work on this last piece that I'm now going to put in front of the acetate. And I think this just kind of helps the shaker part look a little bit more finished. Um, I'm using the same material that I used to cut the base of this rose. And this is actually kind of a unique material that I have from Spellbinders. And it's kind of um, a wood paper that you can die cut. So it has wood grain to it. And it's really neat looking. And I just thought it looked good with this rose and with the card that I'm going to be building. So I die cut that, just putting some more glue on there. And then I'm going to put it on top of the acetate and line it up with the rest of the die cuts underneath. So you're not really going to see much of the white unless you look at the shaker part from an angle. Um, it's going to kind of look like it's all of that wood paper, which is really neat and that's what I was going for. So I'm just lining it up, kind of sliding it into place. And then I'm going to put that craft um, stamp block on top of it again and just let it set and let it dry while I work on the rest of the card. All right, so I have these pieces of paper that I'm gonna be layering on top of some craft card stock for my card base. This paper, the floral paper, is actually from Canvas Corp Brands, and it's um, by a watercolor artist in Poland, and she paints these, and then they print them on watercolor paper and different kinds of paper, and it's just really gorgeous, and I thought it went well with the whole floral theme of this card. I also tore a little bit of vellum that has some scripty printing on it and I put that on the bottom and I'm going to be layering my shaker rose on top. I kind of want to nestle those leaves in behind my flower, the ones that I made before I started filming, um, just to kind of make it look like they're in the background but they're still there. So for my sentiment I went ahead and I cut some more of that craft, that word lovely which is a Heidi Swap die that I cut die cut with that craft cardstock and I'm going to also stamp out a supporting sentiment using my Concord and Knight Posies fill in stamp set. I'm going to be embossing this with my gilded embossing powder so I'm just rubbing my embossing bag on my my paper so that it can cut down on static cling and then I'm going to stamp it out with my embossing ink and then heat emboss it with my gilded embossing powder. <laughs> So I want to stamp it up here on the edge of my paper because I just want to cut it down into a really thin strip so I can layer it behind that lovely word. So here's my gilded. Just going to sprinkle it on and since I already ran my embossing bag over my paper, I cut down on that static cling so I would get a cleaner embossed sentiment and I wouldn't get embossing powder sticking where it shouldn't. So just give your embossing powder a second to cool down. If you touch it right after you emboss it, you could smear it, but it just takes one or two seconds and then it's fine. And then I can go, go ahead and cut it out with my um, paper trimmer. And then I'm just gonna line it up on my card, make sure that my placement is where I want it to go, and I can just adhere it down. Now my lovely word is a little bit too long, so I cut off the L-Y and just made it love. <laughs> So it fits perfectly on my card, and the sentiment ends up saying, hello there, love. So it still makes sense, it's just not the whole lovely word that I had in the beginning. So I cut down that little hello there so I can kind of stick it behind my rose, and then just kind of get the placement right for this whole sentiment. 
And then I'll just add a little bit of craft glue to my sentiment and to that word love and adhere it down. You might also notice that I added a little twine bow and that's also some jute cord from Canvas Corp Brands. I really love the natural cord from Canvas Corp Brands and I always have a ball of this twine in my craft room because it's kind of become a staple with my crafting. I, do, I use this twine for a lot of DIY and a lot of home decor um, projects as well. So I'm just using some more of that craft glue, sticking it down and trimming off the extra on the edge of my card. I want to make this sentiment flush with that floral paper. Just make sure it's all lined up. And then I can use my fine tip applicator on my craft glue to add some more glue to this um, die cut word and adhere that down as well. So that's pretty much my card for the day. I just wanted to mostly show you how you can use these micro pearls in a little shaker that you want to um, build on your own. And like I said, if you have any dies that have that really thin or any kind of outline that has a lot of spaces in between that you can stack up and build sort of walls to hold these beads in, you can make any kind of shaker um, in a similar style as well. So just use your imagination, get kind of creative in your own craft room, use the dies that you already have, and make some fun shaker cards. So I'll have some more information on my blog. I'll have some links down below. Um, you can go over there and check it out, see some more photos. Otherwise, thanks for joining me today, and don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and follow. Um, share this video if you're inspired. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!